Guys, we are live, 646-787-8027. I see my last guest on the line, this really cool, excellent drummer. This is a cool song. The name of the song is called Rest is History. Uh, Mike Machine Malay on drums. We are back, 646-787-8027. Tremendous, tremendous stuff from my uh, last guest of the evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show, Mike Machine Malay. Mike, Joe Gaines is around the kid. How are you, brother? I'm doing really good, Joe. How are you? We have a great show. We had two 
uh, tremendous Yamaha guys, and now we have another excellent Yamaha guy in yourself. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for giving me some of your time tonight. Oh, thanks for having me, buddy. It's my pleasure. Uh, I've just been, uh, uh, love watching you play. That song, you know, it reminds me of, there's so many influences in there. I mean, I, I heard, I heard, um, Old Triumph in there. I heard a band called Marillion in there. I heard, uh, some, some Dream Theater. Tell me about that song and, and, and the whole concept of, of that song and, and the sound. Uh, okay, well, that song in particular was something that uh, I fell in love with as a fan. Uh, that guy was kind of a local to me, and uh, I you know, got a hold of him and asked if I could uh, do my version of drums to his song, so he allowed me to do that, and that was my concept towards a song that kind of already existed. Yeah, it was just great and uh, just uh, tremendous stuff, man. Uh, awesome. Uh, great, great stuff. I, I liked it a lot. I, I love the cymbals on there. Just a great drum sound. Awesome stuff. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, those are my Sabian yeah. symbols. Nice, yeah. man. Sabian's always good. I have Sabian's myself. Yeah, I know. But uh, I want to go back a little bit. Uh, 1979, uh, New Brunswick, uh, I think, uh, in, in in Canada. Um, two years old, uh, I think we had a uh, a blue thunder set from Sears. You pretty much destroyed that set. And then five years old, you got a, a Olympic drum set from Premier what was going on early on, you know, uh, I guess in the early 80s with, uh, you know, yourself and, and the whole drum concept? Uh, yeah, for me, that's like, uh, you know, like when life was like really exciting, Joe, you'd go to like your average corner store and there would be like Hit Parader or like Metal Magazines yes. and like yes. Bon Jovi on the cover. And, you know, your your bag of chips had like cool tattoos of rock bands in them and stuff. So, you know, as a little kid, I was enamored by it. I, I couldn't believe that it was happening around me, like that, you know, people could be larger than life in rock and roll, you know? So as a little kid, I was pretty obsessed with it. And, uh, you know, of course, my parents are musicians, so they kind of got supported yeah. by them when they realized that, you know, I was that obsessed. So I got really yeah. lucky with the whole era. You know, that's how I feel as a drummer. I know in your earlier topics with Mike uh, Vanderhool and maybe even Tom, you mentioned how, like, do the new drummers get it? And unfortunately, I don't think society gets it at the moment, to be honest. <laughs> okay, good. Nice. Yes. You're, you're, that's, that's a great point, brother. And, and I, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you remember how, like, yeah. it was, like, everywhere, you know? Like, everywhere that you went, if you were what I call, quote-unquote, a drummer, people, like, admired that and did that. Like, oh, you're a drummer, which means you're probably going to be larger than life. And, you know, I, I always kind of live in that mindset for myself. Well, do you think uh, the Internet is to blame at all for that? Uh, no, because the, the Internet is like the most valuable educational tool on the planet. You know, if you really thought of the Internet as one platform or one singular perspective, it's, you know, the most richest resource or, or library or community. You know, just like, like uh, you know, around the kid is, it's like become this wealth of perspectives from every yes. amazing guy or girl. But, and, Mike, you see, you know, yes, I feel but, like, I, sorry, but I just mean like the Internet is kind of like how you use it. And for me, the Internet has been nothing but amazing. Like, I really am in right. love with it. <laughs> I, I, I love it, too. But I remember a time uh, I started playing when I was 13. I started playing 82 and cassette tapes. There was no Internet. I didn't know what half these drummers look like. Now we could watch a guy to see what his feet are doing. It's great. It's great. Uh, it's, I guess it's a sign of the times. But I think sometimes it could be too much. I, I love the Internet. Back then, you said it before, you know, things were so much different. It, it, uh, it, it, it was real back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, what I could agree with you yeah. on that, Joe, is that back then when we had, say, a cassette tape, and, you know, and you, you right. put the tape over the two tabs and you went to your friend's house yes. and you recorded one of his Led Zeppelin records, right? And then you took yeah. it home. Well, you're like, you're truly savoring that that meal, right? Like if you got your Van Halen tape, well, you, you digested Van Halen for weeks. That was what you came home from yeah. school and listened to every day. Or if you're in your buddy's uh -huh. car, that's what you were all listening to. But now people kind of like, instead of consume music, they lick it. They literally just go on the internet and taste it like, you know, I want to say they lick it like a lollipop. Yeah. Nobody truly right, right. consumes the music like, like we once did. But now I think that's still a choice. 
right? Like when I discover new music on the internet, if I'm really in love with it, I spend a lot of time on it, you know, because I'm from that era. And that's one thing that yeah. I'll say that I really try to like uh, portray to my students or my colleagues that, you know, just really submerse yourself in it if that's really what you're attracted to rather than spend time yes. being uh, tornadoed or scattered around by the variety of what's on the internet because it's so yes. intense, you know? Yeah, really, really great choice of words, brother. We're talking to the great uh, Mike Machine Malay. Just been so nice to come on my show tonight. Talk to me about bands that I grew up. I mean, big influence: uh, Iron Maiden, Ozzy, Metallica. You know, we got we got Clive Bar, we got Nico McBrain, we got Ozzy's drummers. You know, from uh, Tommy Aldridge. My, uh, my guest coming up uh, is, is the great, you know, Lee Chris Lake uh, on our first two Ozzy albums, and. and uh, Randy Castillo later on. Um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, and, love and, all those and guys. Of, of course, Lars. Talk to me about the influence on, I think, these three main bands were big on your early playing, you know? Maiden, Ozzy, and Metallica. Yeah, absolutely, like 110%, because, you know, they were, like, also, like, some of the metal highlights of the magazines, maybe, or, like, they were the yes. albums one of my cousins might have had on hand. But when I got into Iron Maiden... It, it changed me so much of like what I thought drums could do because they sounded very dancey, if that makes any sense. Like it wasn't like clunking drumming that like I was used to hearing, like boom, boom, pa, boom, 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 pa. Uh, right. My main was right. more like do, ka da, do, ka da, do, da, do, da, do. So I really got attracted to these like gallops and stuff. And uh, then, you know, I was really into Nico probably more than anyone in that early, early stage, you know, we'll say from five years old till. 12 and uh, he was the right. one foot king so i really was into all his patterns with one foot and uh then in my teen years i got in more into like ozzy and anthrax and metallica i became very obsessed yeah. with metallica specifically uh but at that time still being a, a nico kind of like a, a worshiper uh i did all the metallica right. stuff with one foot you know i did almost all the early metallica music with one foot because i didn't have the internet like you say i couldn't right. find out how these guys were doing it and even if i had the picture on the back of the master of puppets vinyl with him with the two picture on i didn't quite put it together right if that makes yes. sense so when we get into the story and i'd like to you know drop it finally that i am the world's fastest foot player with world's right. fastest drummer organization etc that that when people ask me how did you become it, it this is a huge part of it that I, I played right foot patterns hugely from Iron Maiden and then I got, moved on to do all the Metallica patterns with one foot but then when I realized about double bass around 17, 18 uh, I got discovered into Slayer's version of Inagata De Vida and I tried right. to do it with one foot and it was just way too much you know it's just with a yeah. long song and, and then somebody just clued me in like bro you know they're doing it with two feet so rather than take the traditional double bass approach of like 16th, dugga, 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 uh, I started doing all the same Nico McBrain patterns and Metallica patterns with the left foot. So it kind of really like got me in shape, you know, by default. Mm -hmm. and, Great. Uh, and then from there, when I started tackling the, the more death metal stuff or like, let's say the black metal, you know, the faster stuff, I had pretty strong independence in my feet. So that, that really helped. So I, I, I credit those eras for bringing me into the new eras. If I didn't train back then the way I did on those styles, then I probably wouldn't be capable of what I can do or what I could do at that time. Mm, just uh, uh, great stuff. Guys, talk to uh, Mike Machine Malay right now. 2005, 2006, 2007, world's uh, fastest drummer champion. Talk to me about this time and, uh, you know, what it did for your um, overall attitude, you know, uh, you know what it did for you a a as a drummer, you know, to, to have this this title now. Oh well, uh, you know, I had to be very wary of that, Joe. Like, you know, there there are so many contexts to what drumming is. Like, there's drumming by yourself in a room, and then there's drumming with a band, and those rules can right. change like hugely. So from going from a guy who was like the drummer of the town, we'll say like where I played with all the best people that I loved and, you know, I was having a good time to become the world champion. I was fortunate enough that I had enough true friends that kept me very grounded, you know, and they would, they would expose me to people who could, you know, literally destroy me. I mean, if you consider a guy like Virgil Bonatti, you know, I don't compare myself to him. He's, he's planet X, you know, pun intended. So, you know, being exposed to great drummers and also having a great group of people in my life at that time, it kept me very humble about 
that isn't a, a, a position like that is a title. It's not really who you are. So, right. you know, I, I have this uh, persona that I project, which is Mike Machine. That is what I attach those uh, attributes to or what those accolades could mean, you know, to be larger right. than life. So I stay mm-hmm. very grounded about any of that. That's just uh, an achievement, and I'm happy about it. But, uh, you know, at that time, I was still in bands, and those bands made me pursue music more than just scores. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Just a, a, so always, yeah, always staying very grounded about it. Yeah, yeah, excellent stuff, man. I, you know, um, uh, I know you, uh, you're a tremendous teacher. You spend a lot of time teaching. Uh, do you take a different approach? You know, uh, even a, a mental approach uh, from behind the set and in front of the set. You know, conveying and teaching to your students. Absolutely. Um... You know, um, some of my close friends will tell you that I love, like, analogies. I'm always using analogies. And and one of my current favorite ones for teaching is, um, as a teacher, it's my job to, uh, I want to say, look at the Rubik's Cube, which we call the drum set. So when we look at the Rubik's Cube, you and the student are observing it from two different perspectives. The way I, like, sit that down on a table, you on one side might see yellow and green dots, and I see red and blue dots, but we're both looking at it, Right. So what I try to do is my first move as a teacher is to understand the way they are looking at it, right? It's, it is the Rubik's Cube sitting on the table, but what do you see? And, and I really try to dig into that student, like, what is it that you want? What is it that you like? What is it that you would like for it to say? And then from there, mm-hmm. I just kind of, like, propel what it is they really want. And if I see some holes or flaws in that direction, then I step in as the authority. But I'm never really an authority as a teacher. I'm always a guide. And yeah, just try to like help them with perspective. Yeah, and you know, in, in in your eyes, what is the best recipe, Mike, for a young drummer who wants to make his or her career in drumming? The best recipe uh, to value yourself. You know, uh, when it comes to uh, like trophies, like world fastest drummer, or even platinum records. You know, to be a guy that walks into a NAMM show and he's had a platinum record. You know, um, you shouldn't need, like, these external things to make you valuable, in my opinion, because I've met some people that have zero accolades that are just so valuable. You know, they're just so right. powerful people. They're so smart. They have their stuff so together. And, and they're not searching for paths on the back in any format. Like, they're just so down to earth. And that's really what I wish everyone could kind of see for themselves. Like, you don't have to, um, I want to say, aim to be patted on the back. You can just be that and it's like a self-propulsion so i think yeah, all the younger I, kids kind of need to know that because they're they're exposed to the internet which the internet as a con conduit is a bully all you're going to see is somebody better right that's what i love about it i go there and i watch like a guy like ronald bruner jr and i just feel like you know i just started drumming <laughs> it's a great feeling i just love it yeah but for a new kid maybe they're like oh my god Look at this, right? So I want them to kind of always value themselves. But you might be the next guy who discovers the one thing that's never been done, you know? Yeah, yeah, just uh, t- t- tremendous stuff. You know, uh, you. tonight's theme is is uh, Yamaha. You're a Yamaha artist. Uh, so is Tom Breckline and Mike Vanderhul. Uh And I have asked questions tonight about Yamaha. Um, you know, what is it about Yamaha to you, uh, not only the, uh, the drums, but the people behind the scenes that other companies didn't have? Um, okay. Um, like, uh, I've had pretty good experience with many companies and uh, a lot of drum kits. You know, I, I pride myself on the fact that I've experienced over 500 drum kits, and that means owning them mm-hmm. and, you know, truly spending some time on them. Um, when it comes to Yamaha, all through my entire drumming career or history, it always seemed to be like, uh, I want to say quality controlled. You know, it always didn't matter if it was a riding in someone's old garage, beat up, it was functioning just fine. And if I went to a backline gig and that kid has been the backline for the last seven years, it's still fine. You know, there was always this quality control about them. And uh, I spent a lot of time searching other sounds, but I kind of have always been looking for a specific sound, to be honest, and now I feel like Yamaha has delivered that with the Yamaha Phoenix. I'm not sure if you're mm, familiar yes. with that line. Yes, but, yes. Uh, 
yeah, I honestly, I think that is the cream of the crop in uh, all my experiences with production line drum sets, like bar none. Um, so the quality control is there for me with my sound with Yamaha. And then when you bring up the relationship, um, I honestly literally could not have better communication, better support, better understanding, uh, maybe even better uh, mentoring and tutoring because, you know, everyone is so powerful in what they do and the roles among Yamaha. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's an honor. I mean, you open the tonight with Tom Brecklin, and I would love to tell everyone that I'm a huge Tom Brecklin fan. The first time nice. I've ever seen him do uh, Egyptian Danza with Al Di Miola, I didn't think nice. it was even human. I was like, that is retarded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, I know. At that I know. time, I was doing, uh, you know, 60s note motorhead tunes, and to see him do Egyptian Danza singularly in a, like, probably a 50-minute concert, you know, it just, at that yeah. moment, I realized there was aliens, you know, <laughs> just, wow. Yeah. Well, so it's an honor yes. to be on the same family with Yamaha, with a guy like Tom, you know, to be, yeah. to be revered or to be valued, right? Which I said about the student thing, like even for myself. Sure. It's a huge, huge humbling value to be on the same, you know, list as Tom and, you know, Steve Gadd and Dave Blackhole and Benny, whoever, you know, they're all just so. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, but Mike, you, you see, see here's, the, here's the thing about that. You deserve it because you're a tremendous drummer too. And 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 I'll say this, I say it every show, I treat Mike Malay the same as I do Dave Weckl. It doesn't matter if Mike Malay is better than this guy or this guy is better than Mike. On my show, you're a drummer, and I treat you all the same. And I don't care um, if, if, if you're better than somebody or somebody's better than you. It's not about that to me. It's about a story you have to tell. I don't care who's better because everybody is better in their own mind than, 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 than what they think. So you're a drummer, bro, and you deserve just as much time on my show as, as Dave does. You know. But So I just want all the drummers on my That's show nice. to experience you. Oh, it, it, and, and I mean that. It, it's, uh, on my show, there's no competition. You're a drummer. That's all you have to do is come on my show and be a drummer. Oh, totally. and we'll, and we'll I, I, feel, I feel like I'm an instant brother the moment I find out someone's a drummer like, or a sister. You know? yeah. If anyone you know, has a yeah. drum set, I'm just instantly bonded with them. But you yeah, know, sure. I checked out some of your own stuff too, Joe. Like you know, uh, I'm totally a new fan of yours too, man. Like You play great. Uh, you know? Don't, thanks, don't devalue yeah, you yourself know, by I, being the host of this show. You are a fellow drummer, man. You're great. Yes. I, I, you know what it is? I find that uh, I'm not playing as much right now because I'm uh, I'm with with my daughter so much. You know, she's my life, my daughter. But I find that the show has actually taken away from my playing. And you know what, Mike? I'm okay with that because the show's very passionate. You know, so uh, I, I, I'm okay with that. But but thank you for the compliment. I wanted to ask oh, you sure. an honest yeah. question. Uh, you know, and it, it's a question, and I I want your honesty because there's no wrong answer here. Would you still play Yamaha if you weren't endorsed by them? Okay, so that's a great question because I don't think I will ever get the chance to say this story really officially out in the drum community probably ever again. So I'm going right. to break it down real, real quick. When I got to meet the right people in Yamaha, you know, like not fellow drum kit owners, but like some of the people in Yamaha, uh, I was fortunate enough that I was working in a store and I invited a couple of them back to my house you know, just to hang out a little bit. And when I got there, I had a double bass DW collector short stack kit, and I had a regular 24-inch DW collector kit, and I had a handmade um, bearing edge kit, and I had a double bass Tama superstar kit, and I had, and I had, and I had, and I had, right? So I had a huge amount of drums, and I didn't have a single Yamaha in the room. And we had just done this, like, Yamaha Pisces Day event, and I got to hear Phoenix for the first time that day. Um, so I came back to my house with these guys and I sat down with, you know, them to play a little bit and maybe even show off a little bit cause it's fun. Right. So I'm playing along and, and instantly I felt like, you know what, they can hear what I can hear right now, which is these drums actually don't sound as good as the drums they played today. So it was just kind of a seed mm -hmm. that happened for me with them. And from there, I, I kind of mentioned like, Hey, what if I sold all these and got a Yamaha? Would you guys help me out? And, and he <laughs> honestly was said, uh, he just said, well, when you love Yamaha, give me a call. So I kind of started experimenting with Yamaha products in the store that I worked at and then going to other stores, checking out other guys, and I got my hands on a Phoenix kit, and the rest is history from there because then they realized I was very dedicated. It is a very expensive kit. I had sold all the other kits 
to get the Phoenix kit. So I made the right. leap wholeheartedly, no, no, you know, leap, total leap of faith kind of situation. And then from there, it still took a whole other like year and a half for me to even have the conversation again, and it worked out. So, right, you know why, Mike? Because I, 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 and 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 great story. Thank you for that. I see so many young drummers, and here's what they'll say. I sent out five resumes to drum companies today. I'm like, what? What are you doing? Tom Breckline Fan yeah. Fest. Why would you play something you're not happy? You sent out, like, I'm a, I'm a pro guy. So right now I'm not endorsed by pro. Do I want to be? It doesn't really matter to me. But if I am one day, if, if, if I'm not, I'm still going to play them, you know? Uh, uh, right. No, I and that's just the thing. Like, see, you, you have yeah. to be okay in your own skin. You know, and even if the company – you know, in the next, like, say, year, drop me. Uh, I have two Phoenix kits now, luckily, Joe, and it doesn't matter if the relationship yeah. totally crumbled for me. Those are my sound. You know, they do produce, yeah. um, I want to say, peace, you know, that content feeling that we all want from our sound. If Pearl yes. is your yes. content sound, sure. then that is it. Don't don't compromise it for free stuff or help. Like, oh, you're going to Brazil. We'll send you two kits. Don't do it because you'll have two kits that aren't you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I just, I see so many guys, oh, I... I, I mailed out five uh, resumes to symbol companies. Oh, which one do you like best? Whoever chooses me. I'm like, come on. Yeah. That's no, no, not what music sure. those is. Are sad. That's those, not what music is. Those are not is. just sad perspectives. Those are sad relationships. You yeah, know, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's, uh, there's only so far you can. But don't don't let those uh, situations consume you, Joe. You know, like honestly, you you seem to have, you know, I want to say sincerity in what you play. So, you oh know, yeah, you, you don't really have to concern with with that. You know, no. I, mean, I just think it's, it's the it's, companies it's, that really I, always I, complain about that. They always say, oh, I got 20 emails today, and none of them actually own our products. You know. Right, right. Yeah, I just see so many guys, and I, I think there's a, a big misconception with endorsements. But, you know, we're talking to Mike Malay right now, Mike Machine Malay, uh, and just a, a, a great stuff. You know, um, you're a tremendous teacher. I hear so many great things about people I know for, uh, uh, up in Canada and all you do for a, a long time. In your opinion, Mike, what is one of the biggest misconceptions you see in young students today? Hmm, misconceptions. Um, they think it's going to be easy. I would say mm-hmm. that's the biggest yeah. misconception. You know, um, yeah. it, you know, I'm getting older, <laughs> Joe, and I don't know how old you are, but yeah. I'm getting to the point where I yeah. feel the secret of life. You know, what's the whole meaning? You know, like the flower yeah. budding, it's adversity. And until you really come to terms with the rewards of adversity, you're not really going to get to even close to where you thought you were going to get when you bought a drum set, right? Right. Uh, to me, it's it's an instrument that's very demanding. Like, you know, it doesn't it doesn't just uh, give sustain without force. You know, maybe the way like a gain on a guitar could, you know, I could hit the the note once and it'll ring for five minutes. But we do not get those rewards as a, an instrument. So. I yeah. think the misconception that every person has when they approach the drums is it's going to be so fun. It's really fun until you want something. <laughs> and when you want something, the drums are going to put you on a, on a pedestal, you know, where you're stuck mm. until you earn it. And then it will release you to do what you want. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If you Sometimes can, it give feels me like a quicksand uh, for me, Joe, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I know you say, I, I, I know what you mean by the quicksand in the comment. Uh, Give me a give me a little story if you can, a couple minutes on uh, maybe a student you had, uh, a, a special student who who really touched you in a different way. You have any stories you could share with us? Like in particular, okay. Well, even right now in my current life, uh, I have a student. His name is Jack Thomas, yeah. and I would like everyone mm-hmm. to kind of check him out in support. Um, he was 17, working at a factory, and had his arm chewed off. And right oh. to the shoulder, and he he is a drummer, and he was a budding drummer, like star pupil in like several music classes in his high school, doing many performances, etc. And within like a couple months, the kid is a total champ. He's still playing drums as best he can with one arm. Then he gets a prosthesis wow. with a special drumstick. So very inspiring to like, you know, be working on perspective and limbic control because he you know he only has three out of four now. So you know, discovering you know, Rick Allen and, you know, many other possibilities of direction on his drum set. He is the, yeah. I want to say the star yeah. of my life when it comes to adversity. You know, he, nice. he didn't even like trip, you know, if I could say that as far as like people who practice or what their goals are, he, he didn't, you know, he didn't stay in a state of shock at all from it. He just kept pursuing wow. his musical passion. So I have these students where, 
I feel obligated just to give them any answer they need, no matter what, you know, even if they can't give me an exchange of money or whatever it is. It just, oh, you you deserve it time and time again the moment you pick up that set of sticks, you know? Yeah. Uh, Which is I'll inspiring me, that. right? Like, I can't, I yeah. can't be a lazy oh, guy sure. if I have a student like that, you know? So it's, yeah. it's very yeah. rewarding to be one of his teachers. Yeah. Yeah. I want to contact him later because I want to get a hold of him. I want to have him on my show. Uh, uh, that's a great story. I I, I love having uh, that's great. All, all, uh, and and he he's a drummer to me. One arm or no? I had this guy. If you ever heard of him, his name is Alvin Law. You know Alvin Law? No, not yet. Oh, uh, you gotta listen to me, Mike. This guy has no arms. <laughs> he has no arms. He plays wow. drums. Uh, you're not gonna believe it. I like people like that because you know every day, Mike. We're complaining about stupid things in life. We're complaining about, you know, you know, frugal things. And here we got a guy with no arms, and 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 your student with one arms. He didn't complain. He just he didn't even hiccup. He just got back up there and just kept it doing. I love people who face adversity. Oh, for sure. But like... really, but but really, don't face adversity. You know. <laughs> Well, they make the most of it, right? Which is like, you know, you could probably yeah. very much relate as when you say, oh, I don't get to practice because I'm a father, but you're a proud father and you've accepted the oh, adversities yeah. of that role, right? Well, these guys, oh, sure. you know, they're they're proud of the adversity. You know, when I observe him and his growth, he's just, you can tell that he must have worked so hard for it, but, you know, they're, they're doing well with it. Yeah, so I'd love to check out this guy who has no arms and plays. You know, uh, there's another oh, yeah. thing for me, too, uh, as, a, as a drummer, Joe. I'd like to put it out in the show. I no longer yeah. consider myself a drummer ever since I've had the pleasure and honor of being around guys like Alex Acuna and stuff, mm-hmm. simply because they're like rhythmists. It doesn't matter if they play a parking meter or if they play the dash of your car or they play their own body. Right. These guys have more rhythm than a drum set could ever handle. <laughs> like, yeah. you know? yes. so I apply yeah. my rhythms to a drum set as a profession and a craft. But really, I feel like it's it's becoming like a, a passion of rhythms, and I'm trying to collect them all and, you know, put them out on whatever's in front of me, you know. It's like a whole new Talk to perspective me about, of it. You know, yes, over the years, I, I've, I've had a special relationship with, with bass players. I love to jam with just a bass player with me. Uh, talk to me about your relationships over the years as a drummer with, with a bass player and how special that bond needs to be, you know, that foundation. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you know, the the personality of that choice, you know, uh, when it comes to students, I have a music store usually attached to the school and parents will say, well, do you think drums are for them? And I've kind of come to this concept where if you take a kid into a music store, they will be a magnet to the instrument. So if they're a personality who loves saxophone, that's really where they're going to end up. Or if they're a personality who likes drums, etc. So I find when I meet bass players, they're usually like the personality for that. You know, they are kind of quiet. They are usually kind of laid back. And this is not every cookie cutter bass player personality, but they usually have what I think it takes, like maybe a really strong right hand or a big thumb or something that I'm like, yeah, you're a bass player. And it's not even, not even in question. You are a bass player. And they usually have the feel for the bass because of their personality right? If that makes any sense. So once I kind of mm-hmm. adapt to their personality, it's easy for me to convey my drumming language with a bass player because I play with many types of bass players. I do stand-up bass players doing rockabilly and they're just so phenomenal. And then I play with electric players who can walk all over the neck. And then I'll play, you know, with guys who just come up with like maybe a Chapman stick, you know, and they're tapping up a storm. So, yeah. you know, I, res- I respect them hugely. I try to listen very intently and, uh, yeah, you know, bass moves water, so I never try to uh, devalue them. You know, when it comes to in the construct of a band, I try to treat everyone, you know. Like you say, with all the drummers on your show, we're all equal. For me, anyone on the stage yeah. is equal. I try to give them equal attention. Yeah, great, great stuff, brother. Uh, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you got coming up? Uh, you know, where can people check you out? Are, are, are you doing any, any, any touring or anything? You know, what's going on? Uh at the moment, because I'm, you know, teaching and doing clinics and stuff, I'm not touring. But, right. uh, you know, if the right gig came on, <laughs> of course. Sure, uh, sure. Um, right now, I'll be doing a, a gig in downtown Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, Canada, uh, at the Roxy uh, on Sunday the 30th, doing this country gig. Because I'm pretty multifaceted in music. I think of it like a spectrum, you know, uh, yeah. do any style, any time. So I'm doing a country gig there. And then uh, for Yamaha, I have a clinic coming up May 23rd in Surrey, B.C. 
British Columbia, and my I will birth- be on the theme birthday. of hybrid. Oh, it's my birthday? birthday. Nice. No way. <laughs> uh, I wish you could make it, Joe. But it will remind me to send you a happy birthday that day. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm doing everybody like, can a drum check, class at Yamaha, and uh, I'm, I'm rehearsing all the time with different bands. and Yeah, everything's doing really good. What uh, Talk to me about... Um, uh, just you know, one last time. Um, the all all the companies you endorse, you know, uh, uh, over the years, uh, have have they helped you on this journey? Also, you know, everybody who who you represent. Oh yeah, um, you know, like uh, if you are not endorsed, like, which I don't think you are, Joe. I'm not sure. Um, there's there's like a, a freedom that comes with that, and you know, and my early days, I really envied that freedom. You know, by going through a lot of company things, like oh, I got to try the whole Zildjian line, I got to try the whole Pisces line, I got to try UFIT, I got to right. try this guy, I got to try that guy. So I was spending a lot of time trying, 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 trying. But what was weird was I didn't listen to my own complaints. If I tried a certain ride symbol and I said, oh, I really hate that bow, I would still end up buying 40 other rides that had that bow. I didn't really learn the lesson. Like, that's not the sound you're listening for. So I started thinking about my own disagreements and shopping kind of towards what I was looking for. And uh, by funneling in that kind of plaint department, I feel like I've landed on, like, the total hit list of endorsements. Like, all my gear when I play on top of my kit is so great, you know, to play Evans drum heads on Phoenix shells with, you know, Yamaha Mm. hardware and snare drums and, you know, to have my Sabian symbols like Legacies and Evolutions and Artisans and, you know, just everything for me right now is texture and uh, it feels so good to be a part of their world because they value Mm. me the way I want to be valued and then I value their gear the way they want to be valued, you know, and I I pay for all my gear, (laughs) you know, it's not like I'm at a, a situation where you know, I'm blowing people's minds in arenas, so I pay for it all, but right. it's so well right. worth it. And if anyone shadowed me, I think they'd be just as happy about the decisions, for sure. Well, I mean, they can check you out at MikeMachine.com. Uh, it, it's been my pleasure, brother. You know, I, I'll, I'll be in contact. Your, your, your insight on drumming is, is spot on, and I, I can't thank you for giving me some of your time tonight, brother. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to give a shout-out to all the drummers out there. You know, keep it going and stay on fire. Mike, Machine Malay, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Okay, bro. Have a great night. Thanks, man. Thank you so much, Mike. Bye-bye. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. Guys, great, great stuff. Mike is just a tremendous drummer. Great conveyor of, of, of thought there. You know, uh, Great words he used. I like when a guest comes on and really knows what they're talking about. And uh, check out MikeMachine.com. He's a great educator and a tremendous drummer. Guys, we will do one last promo, and then we'll come back, and we will say goodnight. <laughs> 